Uh, yeah, that's cool. I mean, I think it's good to keep it there in general anyways. Yeah. Okay. While you, while you type this up, I just have to do this. Okay. What are you doing? <laughs> You'll hear. Money, 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 money. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> oh, a little reggae money All right now. I'm gonna plug in my headphones. <laughs> Literally, like almost anytime somebody says the word money, that song pops into my head. <laughs> oh man. All right, cool. We good. We good. All right. <laughs> I was looking for money songs and that one popped up and I thought it was pretty fun. So. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. So we're both really excited. Thank you for whoever's joining or watching the replay. We're going to be talking about money today and our magical practices on magnetizing it, having a sovereign relationship with it. Um, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, so what do you want to start with? What, what's up? Um, well, I do want to say, because Christine was asking, why is this such a powerful topic right now? And I feel it's such a powerful topic right now because we are stepping so much more into being sovereign beings. And so many people still have a very codependent, victim-like relationship with money where they feel powerless um, and it's such an integral part of society that that's, you know, why it's coming up for everybody because everyone's stepping it up into okay. being free, owning their shit, being powerful, creating their reality. So money's a huge part of that. Um, yeah, that's, that's what was coming up for me. And, um, yeah, what do you, I'm curious to hear what you, what you have to say. Uh-huh. Oh, I've got so much. Money is my favorite thing in the entire freaking world. I love it. Ah, oh. okay. So this is just all, <laughs> it's just all around abundance and expecting there to be increase in your life at every turn. It doesn't even matter if it's related to money, but expecting increase, expecting good things to show up, positive things to show up, whatever it is that you desire to show up. But with money in particular, one thing that I really want to address is that we do not need to work through our blocks. That's a huge thing that I still see everywhere in the coaching industry, um, in the spiritual community. And it's just a complete myth. It's, it's the path that many of us have taken we have chosen to buy into that storyline and we have taken that path. And therefore some piece of us leads us to believe that that is required in order to create money. Um, but it's not. <laughs> um, okay. So let me think of a good example here. So if you were a Fox, okay. And you wake up one day, one day and you realize that you're hungry, but you don't know how to hunt. <laughs> You wouldn't go thinking about why you don't know how to hunt, where it originated from, how it all started. You would figure out how to hunt because you are hungry. And so it's the same thing with money. You can start empowering yourself to create it. You don't have to go and unearth and dig up um, everything that got you to where you are right now. You just need to become fully conscious in the present moment and start moving in the direction of what will help you to create wealth. Um, so what they're saying right now is you need to get crystal clear on what your desire is. What is your end game? What do you want to manifest? Mm -hmm. So somebody mentioned 10.5K. Uh, like somebody else, it might be 20K. Somebody else, it may, might be 100K. So whatever that end game is for you, you need to fix your attention on that. You don't need to think about how it's going to show up, which channel it's going to come through. You just need to fix your attention on $100,000 showing up in your reality. Um, and if you're a business person, uh, 
the more simplified and focused you can be in your offerings, the better. Because another thing they were showing me too is how, so it's okay to offer a multitude of things, okay? It's okay to have five things, 10 things, 15 things you're offering, especially if you have products and programs that don't require your presence. But you don't ever want to promote more than one or two things max at a time because people will get confused and your energy will become fragmented. So you want to promote the thing that feels the most empowering and that it feels like it's going to help you to hit your goal, to reach your end result. So the, the energy needs to be laser focused. That's really key in the money game. You have got to laser focus on the end result and what it is that you can offer as an energetic exchange in order to create and receive that money. Um, and what you'll notice is when you keep your focus on that amount in particular, you will start to expand, you will start to feel empowered and all the little gaps will fill in. So say you do have 10 programs that are available, but you're promoting one program and your mind is fixed, your feelings, your energy is fixed on being abundant with $100,000. You're gonna notice that people start to enroll in all these other programs along with your main program. So you don't have to put those on the forefront. You put on the forefront the one that you are most, um, well, the one that you're most excited about, empowered by, that you feel like you can support people with the most. Um, and then you let all the other spaces fill in. People will still come to you for those other programs. People will still come to you for one-on-one uh, -on -one or whatever the other things are that you offer, but you don't, it's not a great idea to be promoting 10 things at a time because it just confuses people. They don't know which direction to go in. Um, and you want to get into the feeling of having $100,000 in your life. What would that do for you? How would that make you feel? And so it's not, I need to get $100,000. It's not, I need to make $100,000. It's, I have $100,000. How excited would you be? if that occurred for you. So getting into the energy of having that thing right now. And so what I always recommend to you is that if you have, um, say you have a 20K income goal, bump your invocations up to 30K to stretch yourself. Always go bigger than what it is that you actually want to receive. Mm -hmm. stretch what you're invoking and then always ask for that or greater because there could be something bigger than that that you can't see yet or that your mind can't conceive of for you yet um, and that will help you to stretch and grow and expand so whatever it is that you're asking for ask bigger and let that let the smaller amounts fill themselves in um, and always expand it out to this or greater. If there's something I can't see, I'm open to that too. And the thing is, if you want to actually manifest that much money, do you care how it comes to you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you care how it shows up? <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Very, very, very powerful points right there. Um, I, I always, and, and the way that kind of my, the way I express this with my clients, the way I've worked with this with myself is just, I totally agree with you. I mean, gone are the days where we need to work through our money blocks and like get to the, like, you don't need to anymore. You do, however, need to just create a brand new relationship. And so I always relate money to the same way I relate to my romantic relationships because it is a relationship and my romantic relationship shifted the day that I just decided I'm not, I'm not going to battle this person anymore. I'm not going to battle myself and having what I want. And I'm just going to, I'm just going to let it happen. I'm just going to ask for what I want. I'm going to expect to receive it. I'm going to be in the state of that. I'm going to have an open heart to that. And, and then everything just started to flow. Same thing with money. As soon as I decided I'm not going to battle myself with this anymore. I'm not going to battle money anymore. I'm not going to battle the thing that I actually want anymore. Then it started to show up in a multitude of ways, much more quickly. 
And, and that's how you start to build and ground in that relationship is have a new relationship, just almost like wipe your hands clean, break up and then start something new. And the other thing to add to what you're saying is, yeah, so many of you are limited in your experience because you are limiting the capacity um, you have to grow and expand in and from what you actually mm. want. Like ask for the ridiculous amount. Ask for the ridiculous amount. Mm. Ask for the way out of this world amount and keep asking for it. Keep focusing on it. Keep playing with that. Keep grounding that in because that's what you truly want. So that's an alignment for you. Don't mm -hmm. judge it. Don't think about it. Don't question it. Just submit it. Just say, you know what? I guess I really do need a lot more money. I guess I really do want that sort of lifestyle. I guess, you know, whatever it is that you've been trying to compromise with yourself or say almost like, well, I'll ask for it someday, but if I could just get to 10K this week right now, if I could just get to 20K this month right now, I'll be good. That's stemming from lack. It's stemming from fear. As you guys are noticing, anything with an ounce of that anymore is just not going to work or show up in your reality anymore. I mean, mm -hmm. the other thing too is going back to relationships. If you, you want to get it on with your partner, <laughs> you wonder how it's going to happen or when, or if they're going to, if they're, they're going to engage in that with you, or if they're going to allow that or what you have to fix about yourself before you guys can do that or what time it's going to happen or no. And I bet you, if you have that energy around that part of your <laughs> relationship, mm -hmm. it's probably not so hot in that area right now either, because you're yeah. resisting it. You're, you're trying to control it instead of just letting it letting it flow to you. I mean, that's what sovereignty is all about. It's just like letting life flow to you unimpeded, uninhibited. Um, and the other thing that kind of came through for me this morning, knowing that this is what we were going to talk about was they were bringing up the fact that it is an act of self love to allow yourself to just receive or give to yourself what it is you're truly asking and truly craving for. So let's say, let's say you're wanting, uh, 10k, like what Christine said, 10k, 10.5 a week from X amount of clients. Well, those clients are just versions of yourself. That money is just another mm -hmm. version of yourself. So it's your ability to love yourself essentially by it's not this outside thing that you have no control over. Mm -hmm. Well, there's, okay. So a couple of things are coming through and where people get um, mostly blocked up and this is what the people would go. Oh, so I must have an unconscious pattern running, running. I have a block. I need to go in figure out where that is so that I can remove it and move forward. So what's happening is that you just lost sight of the vision temporarily you just went back into doubt. You went into fear. So the key here is to empower the vision. And then you need to sustain and expand the energy of that amount that you're calling in. You need to feel it. You need to embody it. You need to understand that there is no limit of source energy that is creative in nature that can create. There, ever, there's so much abundance and there's no shortage on the planet. There's no shortage anywhere else. That is a, that is a mindset. That is is a myth that the universe is all knowing, all seeing, all hearing, all creating, all powerful. It can create some money for you. <laughs> and so it's just about holding the vision of what you most desire and focusing your energy into that in the most impactful, powerful way possible. So embody 50 grand, embody 100 grand. What does that feel like to you? And I'm speaking energetically here too. So it doesn't matter where you are, what your next level is, what your next expansion is, get in the energy of feeling that abundant and, and stuff will start to manifest in every area of your life really, because it's a match of the source energy that you're coursing, but find the thing. So it's funny because when you started talking about partnership, they brought me to um, like get turned on by money. 
let yourself get turned on and lit up by money. I freaking love money. I think it's one of the things that turns me on the most is mm-hmm. because once you, <laughs> once you figure out how to manifest it and it's flowing into you, it's like, mm-hmm. it's a high, it's a jolt. Yeah. It's fun. Yeah. Uh, to create that and to duplicate that and to help other people create that because ultimately it, it doesn't really even matter what field we're in. We're trying to help each other become more abundant in something. People want to be more abundant in joy, abundant in love, abundant in peace, abundant in money, abundant in whatever. <laughs> the thing is that we want to create, but it's just creating more. And so you want to shift your entire focus into more asking for more dreaming bigger dreaming for more about more expand and so what they're saying too is get futuristic with it so there's no space for going in the past and it, it, yeah at a certain point you just have to set that shit down yeah. and you've got to look forward and you've got to get futuristic so even tapping into the energy of being futuristic and progressive and what does that look like what does that feel like um yeah. And let yourself go there. And so the key here is to empower, empower the vision, empower the frequency, empower the abundance, the feeling of abundance in you. And you can do that by just expecting whatever it is that you're asking for to show up. And you don't have to, you don't have to look around your reality for any type of evidence, except just notice when you do see abundance showing up, notice it. It doesn't matter. It could be the tiniest thing. Just notice when you do see it showing up and that will be, um, you know, an indicator of where your energy is being focused and directed. Is my energy being focused and directed into abundance or is it being focused and directed into lack? So you want to just take the energy that's going into lack, going into the past, going into past patterns and blockages and all of that stuff that just says lack, 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 lack. I have a block. I'm lacking. Mm-hmm. you need to reroute that energy in a new direction and you need to shift it all into empowerment, all into wealth, all into abundance, all into plenty, all into more, all into increase. And so all you see is increase. That's it. All you see is increase. What am I going to receive more of today? What in my life is going to increase today? What is going to expand mm-hmm. um, and, and shift your energy in that new direction. And then when you manifest the first thing, and here's a key, because this is, everyone listening right now has manifested something amazing in their life. No question in my mind about that. Mm -hmm. It's just, how do we sustain that then? So the key is when the things start to roll in and you start to manifest things, you stay empowered. You stay with the vision of wealth and abundance and increase. You don't get lax with your frequency. You don't get lax with your energy and start to revert back to old patterns. So you keep empowering yourself. You keep empowering increase and you look at, okay, well, that's great. I manifested that. What is the next thing that I want to manifest? And even if you don't have anything new that you want to manifest right away, just keep expecting increase Mm -hmm. to show up for you. Mm -hmm. Um, And so you just need to shift your power because how, how empowering is it? And this is hard. So what they, well, it's not hard, but what they told me today is that the indigenous traditions are ready to evolve. And so it can be challenging if we allow it to be challenging to let go of a lot of those old paradigms that simply will not work anymore because the energy doesn't support it. It's not supported by the energy that the energy is so open, so expanded, so abundant, abundant. And it's almost like there's this, it's either you're you found your edge and you're at your edge. What's exhilarating, what's exciting, what's edgy. And you're there and you're just continuing to take those steps and you're continuing to be at that edge for yourself Mm -hmm. or you're not. And it doesn't feel like there's too much wiggle space in between there. It's either you're on or you're off. Um, And so there's just not time or space to be off anymore. Um, Well, because people are waking up faster and faster and the energy is accelerating and everything is expanding more rapidly. And so it becomes much more obvious when you're off, you can feel it a lot more in your body. It's reflected in almost every area of your life. Everything's becoming so much more instantaneous, which is beautiful because in that, uh, in, in that, the instantness, I don't know if that's a word, but I just made it up, um, (laughs) of things, the quickness of things that's how quickly we can shift into a new reality. That's how quickly we can shift into abundance. That's how quickly we can shift into 
wealth and increase. We don't have to play this old game anymore. We don't have to. And I think everywhere um, I've, I've seen it and it's so dis discouraging. I'm like, what sounds empowering to you? Shifting into wealth and abundance and uh, energetic mastery and alignment or in order for you to create something, you're going to have to go through and you're going to have to dig up all this stuff and you're going to have to figure out what's wrong with you. And then you're going to have to shift and you're going to have to work really, really hard every single day. Yes, you will have to apply effort. Yes, you will have to show up every single day, but it will feel fun. It will feel inspiring. It will feel empowered. When you are focused in the right direction, you don't have to dig anything up unless, of course, that's a game that you still want to play. Um, yeah, so you just need to reroute your energy and you need to start empowering yourself. What makes you, and so instead of like the loose general, uh, you know, like do what makes you feel good, it's do what makes you feel good about yourself. What makes you feel good about you? What makes you feel sexy and turned on and empowered and, you know, bold and brazen and badass and supernatural and electric and vibrant and alive and magnetic, all of that. What does it for you? What helps you get into that space? And I don't know, for me, it's, it, it really is focusing on creating abundance and increase in money. It turns me on. I love doing it. I love helping people because you can skip all this stuff. And the reason, the reason why a lot of us went through that was to learn that we didn't have to go through that. That's why, you know, it's the same with suffering. We, choose suffering until we recognize that we have a choice to stop choosing suffering. That doesn't mean that everybody else who doesn't want to suffer has to go through all the suffering that we went through to get to the non-suffering. Mm -hmm. um, and so those paradigms are ready to collapse. And so, yes, you're still going to have to show up and you're still going to have to put in effort, but it's, it's, it shouldn't be hard. And it's not something that, um, because there's still this whole, this energy around earning your worth, earning your place, earning your keep. And this is where I freaking love millennials because they just know they're like, why would I take this really hard, arduous route if I don't have to? And a lot of people don't like them because of that, but it's smart. It's intelligent. It's wise. They're tapped into source energy and they recognize. So it's almost like a little laser beam. So imagine like a laser beam of light. Um, and wherever your focus goes, that, that laser beam of light goes there and it activates that energy. So if you're going and you're digging in your blocks, you're activating that energy, you're breathing life into it, you're making it alive, you're, you're crystallizing it as, a, as an experience in your reality. When you shift your focus to empowering the vision that you want to have, that you want to hold, that you want to experience, and you just keep doing that, that is what starts to become real in your experience. So it's just shifting your focus. Your focus is one of the most powerful things that you have. And um, another thing they were wanting me to pull through too was don't worry about semantics. This is not about words. This is not about language. <laughs> this is about how you feel about the words. This is how you feel about the language because frequency is its own language. Words essentially at the root of them are meaningless. We assign them meaning and value money and um, Italian means something completely different than the word we use in Italian is different from the word that we use in English. So don't get hung up on semantics. Um, just let yourself feel that frequency and whatever you need to do to help yourself continue to, to feel empowered and abundant and alive and filled with life and filled with source energy and filled with the magic of creation, which is your ability to create increase. Just keep doing that, whatever that is for you, whatever turns you on, lights you up, lights you up and excites you the most about creating. And for everybody, that's going to be something completely different. And if you don't know what that is right now, that's okay too. But you just want to sit down and start, you know, ask yourself, like I said, with the magical genie example the other day, because it's just such a, you know, if you had a magical genie that walked up to you and said, if, if I could give you anything that you want right now, no, no questions asked, no, no price to pay, nothing to earn, nothing to do to prove that you're worthy of this thing, what would you ask for? And start getting crystal clear with yourself on, I wouldn't go for more than three things at a time, three things that you want to manifest in your life. And honestly, the more focused you can be, the better. So even if you're an entrepreneur and you have top selling programs, which one do you want to fill up first? 
take it one at a time, focus all of your energy into seeing that program. It's done. It's not even a question. It's not even a, I need to fill this. I need to get people into the clinic. My clinic is filled. So <laughs> this is for that question that was in the comments. Um, you just live in the energy of all those people being there, all those people um, already coexisting in your space with you. You go directly into that vision and you live there. You pretend it's there. You empower that. You feel that. You know that at the, the depths of your being. And you stay there and you continue to empower that energy and grow and expand in that energy. And that's why um, a lot of people are having, well, I mean, I don't know. I see a ton of people creating a lot of abundance, but I do see a lot of people also going backwards with creating abundance because they're trying to create abundance from the old energy that says you need to do A, B, C, D, and E to get to Z. And it's just, you don't have to do that anymore. And so this is um, an opportunity, an opening that is available for people to step into that something new. And, and sometimes we don't discover that something new until we we run out of doing it the old way, right? It's like, try as you might, the old way is not going to work anymore. And, and so the energy is going to let you keep going back in there without getting the results that you were getting before, because you're ready for next level of expansion. You're ready to up level. You're ready to um, be bigger, bolder, um, all of that. And so the old, the way that things worked in the creation process for you in your previous cycle are not going to continue to work for you. So you have to shift that. You have to move into the new direction, into the new momentum and let yourself drop all those rules because really we're only oppressed and repressed by the rules that we choose to buy into and follow. So what about you create the rules? <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Um, exactly. Exactly. A few things came up with that. As far as creating your own rules, um, it goes back to the other day of you get to give yourself permission. You know, so, sometimes it's just as simple as like what I just needed to give myself permission. For example, from a personal experience, um, I created six figures really fast in my old business because I gave myself permission to do so. I gave my, myself permission to live my life a certain way at that point. I knew what I wanted. I knew why I wanted it. And it felt like um, a pit stop to me. So I wasn't attached to it. And then when I started this business, I, I struggled for, for the first year and a half, two years, because I hadn't given myself permission and because it was, I made it mean so much. It, it was like this, like kind of end all and be all sorts of things. So just give yourself permission to ask for what you want. Give yourself permission to go there. Give yourself permission to have the thing. Give yourself permission to ask for more than you've ever even asked for before. Mm -hmm. Give yourself permission to play and create, manifest in a new way. Um, and the other thing too is, because you said creation cycle, which I love that you phrased it that way because that's exactly the energy we're in right now. We're in a new evolved way of creating. We're in a new creative creation cycle that we must play in. It's like we graduated from first grade, we're on to second grade now, okay? So we're going to play in a different way. And so if things are not manifesting for you in the same way, allow yourself to create and play in a different way. It's like learning mm -hmm. a new sport, learning a new language, learning a new instrument. When you go learn those things, aren't you excited? Doesn't it feel like play? Doesn't it feel like something you just like want to get your hands in and explore and try on and, and ground yourself in. And that's, that's, that's part of, I'm going to take it galactic for a second because, you know, I, I, I feel sometimes there's a, such a split between, um, you know, our spiritual gifts and all of this like crazy, cool, uh, tripping realities, quantum leaping. I'm seeing this stuff, all of this versus what's happening here in this reality, in the physical form, there's kind of this split. And what we're wanting you to realize is the reason you're tapping in all of those different things is to get you to create from a different space, to get you to open up and understand there's different ways to create. You don't have to force yourself 
to create in the ways that you're being shown or the new gifts you're waking up to or the new just cool, fun, trippy realities and stuff that you're seeing. You don't have to create from those things. You don't have to try to understand them. They're just there to help help open you up a little bit. How It's like, I'm going to relate it to, I'm going to bring it back to sex. It's like, if you've always mm-hmm. just done missionary your whole life, okay, well, we're just, we're giving you new positions. Okay. <laughs> Try it out. You're still going to feel good and have fun. And, and, and that's what we're wanting you to understand. Another thing that came through for me was numbers. Um, mm. You know, money, numbers play with the numbers. I was just called to do this the other morning. I woke up and I felt like I just, I felt like doing my numbers and writing my numbers in a much broader way on a, in a much larger timeline scale. And that felt so much more exciting and freeing and liberating to me than doing it by like a daily or weekly or monthly basis that I I normally would do. So we're saying, you know, Numbers are frequencies. Numbers are codes. They're just, they're just toys to play with. So, you know, take (laughs) and write out what it will be like when you did manifest that hundred K month or that 10.5 K week or whatever, what is it going to look like? What is it going to feel like? And don't go into your head about it. Just like literally look at them as numbers. So they're neutral. So they're just like crayons that you're coloring with, right? Everything Mm -hmm. just the money, it's just paper, the cards, they're just plastic, the numbers, they're just numbers. And you can grow and create them however you wish to choose. There's no density and weight attached to these things anymore and do whatever it is that feels fun to you. And I, I mean, I still do this sometimes in my, in my last business, a lot of it was cash. So you know what I used to do? I would sit on my bed and I would I would count out my stacks of cash. And I'd, I'd do 500 here, 500 here, 500 here. Then I'd do 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000. And I would just like be in love with looking at all of my money and all of my stacks of <laughs> cash. And that sounds so ridiculous. Like No, I love it. Who does that? Drug dealers do that. Nobody else does that, right? But I needed that physical experience with money. (laughs) I did. And so sometimes I do that, you know, like, like sometimes I, because I, it it makes it more grounded and more physical for me. So, so have fun, you know, move money around in your bank accounts, make new bank accounts, like just (laughs) play, like fuck it, explore, create, let it flow freely because then you're freeing up your energy. Yeah. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to say too, is whatever you do to keep yourself in that feeling has to feel empowered and empowering to you, because there's a lot of times where we do actually ask for what we want or do what we want, but it doesn't feel empowering. It's still attached to some old shit that we're not saying you need to go into. We're saying you just need to shift into whatever feels empowering to do to you that gives you that sense of i'm 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 powered i'm in power i'm electric i'm alive i'm free i have energy and i have strength and i have resilience um you know because if some of the things that you enjoy don't make you feel empowered or some of the things you think that you want don't make you feel empowered because you think well, it's still not enough, or I'm going to have to give it to so-and-so, or, well, that's just enough to pay off the debt, or that's just enough to start the other business or whatever, then it's not, it's, again, and it's not going to work out. It has to feel empowered. So stretch yourself to those limits, to those extremes, and you'll be so surprised how much faster things start to show up for you than when you were just confining, confining that, um, that energy. Mm -hmm. That's so important. And they're bringing me to um, shame around asking for money or thinking that instead of just outright asking for money, that you have to be overly concerned with service and contribution and, um, you know, all the other different things that we, we tie to money instead of just flat out admitting that you want the money 
and how much money do you want? And the thing is, however money, much money you bring in is going to have to match the service that you provide. Well, you're going to have to sustain the frequency of that amount throughout the duration of the time that you're working with your people, which is why sustainability, alignment, and expansion are so fucking important. Mm -hmm. you, you, you can't, when you're at these more expanded levels, you cannot afford to backslide. Literally, you cannot afford to backslide. I have watched multiple high level coaches this year scale back in their income and lose more clients than they've ever lost in their business because they weren't able to sustain and expand the frequency. That's all that has to do with. So they achieved the goal that they wanted and then they got lax around their frequency. They got lax around their alignment and they didn't. Cause to me, service is okay. How big is your energy? How much source energy can you help to activate and calibrate in another person? How much source energy are you expressing and giving to the people that you are working with to the point where they can feel it? Mm -hmm. They can feel it coming through you, emanating through you, and therefore activating that code within them. That is my definition of service. So if you are able to have that channel open and free flowing, and you're able to give that to somebody else, then you're in service, period, end of story. And you're in service anyways. I mean, even if you don't have that feeling, you're in service. But that is the kind of service that most people are going to exchange a dollar amount for. So you're exchanging abundance for abundance. You're exchanging energy for energy. So if somebody comes to you and they pay you, let's say they pay you 20K for a program, you better give them 20K plus how they can create that for themselves when they come to you. Mm -hmm. you, you have to have that value exchange there. You have to have that energetic exchange there. You have to be ready to give people that amount of abundance and then some when they come to you. And what I was noticing was people were good at manifesting that, um, that goal that they had set, they could get themselves into the space to manifest the thing that they wanted, but they couldn't sustain and expand that frequency. And they didn't know how to duplicate that for the people that they were working with. And this all goes back to frequency. When, when you're, when you're working at those levels, like your energy becomes your top priority. Mm -hmm. You've got, you've got to stay in alignment and you don't just stay in alignment. You've got to constantly be shifting and realigning. So you've almost got to keep that balance. Um, it's like walk, it's, <laughs> it's like keeping your balance on a tightrope, but you've got to stay in that, that alignment. Like you don't, you don't get to fall off the tightrope anymore. <laughs> Oh, you don't. And, but you become a master at it. Eventually you can run across the damn tightrope, you know? Um, well, and to that, that's again, why most people need to start asking for more and admitting to themselves mm -hmm. what they actually need energetically, as far as how much money it is they're wanting to receive. Because if you're, if you're only asking for 5k a month or something mm -hmm. and yeah you know you can provide that energy exchange and that energetic value but outside in your life based on the number of clients you bring in at that value or, or or whatever if that doesn't provide you in your life everything you need or want to play and create with that would have you at like your highest best amount of energy then it's still going to be trickling in and that's what people need to realize that it's not about whether or not first of all it's not about whether or not you can get people results that's their own responsibility mm. not yours it's not about what other people think it's not about what your clients will think what your clients will say it's not about who's charging for what it's not about what's worked before. It's not about what you think you can get. It's not about what you think is okay. It's not about how much money is circulating around the entire planet. It's not about any of that. It's about what feels most empowering to me and what, what can I, can, am I going to be creating and living in my most expanded, empowered, creative, fun, high vibe life with that amount of money per week or money per month or whatever. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, the amount of energy I want to give to somebody 
is that the equal value in return? Because if you're getting a lesser value in return, they're not going to be able to receive the value you're, you're, you're expanding and giving them in the first place because it's just energy. It's an energy exchange. So if you're here and you're asking for only, if this feels like 10K to you and you're only asking for 2K and a client comes through and gives you 2K and you're trying to give them all of this, well, they only gave you this. They can't receive it. They can't receive all of you. And that's where people still get stuck in worth issues. And of course, I'm just relating this to like the entrepreneur's experience, but you can relate this to really anything um, that, that you have to be asking for what, what's going to be the most expanded for me so that I'm able to share all of that because source wants to flow through you in the ultimate capacity you're a channel for source source mm -hmm. doesn't want to be limited so if you're like mm, okay well that feels like 75 percent of 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 my value that's 75 percent of source energy flowing through me it's just it's like you're just creating more problems for yourself and are you really serving no that's where serving comes in. Serving again is not even something you need to worry about. The only way you're gonna be in service is are you in full service of your energy, of yourself, of your body, of your life, of how you're living, of how you're creating, of what you're allowing yourself to do and be and see and play with. If you're filling that out, if you feel full in that, enlightened, empowered, totally expanded beyond what you can even ask for right now, then you're in service. But if not, you're still playing into the injustice role that we're cycling out of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's a lot going on in all, in all of that. So the first thing that, um, the first thing that I wanna go back to, and I'm gonna have to, okay, so results. <laughs> I have to, that just like, yeah. But here's the thing, if you, can't provide results for your clients then you don't have a business period that is my that is something that i've had to learn the hard way you have got to be strong enough in your leadership that you can lead someone to creating the results that they desire it is up to them to create the results right. that they desire but you have to have strong enough leadership that you can show them exactly how to manifest or create what it is that they are coming to you for because people don't hire people except to improve their lives. And so they're assuming when they come to you that you have some kind of fucking epiphany, aha, something that is going to trigger an awareness in them that is going to help them calibrate right. to a level where they can create those results for themselves. So you're not doing it for them. You're giving them the tools and the leadership that they need and the empowerment in a lot of cases. Um, to go out and create that thing for themselves. But because here's the thing that has come up over the past year with that, the whole thing around um, it's the, okay. Cause there's a lot of different dynamics going on with that results energy. One I have seen, cause I know where you're coming from. I, you're saying, well, what I just said, that it's up to them to create after you give them the tools. But what I've seen in the co coaching industry is that, some coaches are really lax and they'll lay back and they'll let, um, it's almost like they try to let the client facilitate themselves. And then if the client can't get the results and they're showing up and they're doing the work and they're taking the action, then they use that as an excuse to say, well, you're responsible for creating your results instead of owning up to the fact that they didn't show up and do their part. So there's a lot of dynamics in that, but the, the thing that's going to make whatever, business you're in whatever your entrepreneurial venture is you're what's going to provide you with the most abundance is your ability to create results for someone so you have to understand what it is that you can effectively efficiently lead people to and get crystal clear on that for yourself um what is it that I know that I can help people to create and get super stoked about that and excited about that. And that's what will help to draw those people to you because they know, they sense, they understand this person knows how to create this thing. And so I want to go to this person because I know that they can help me to create this thing too. So the more you stoked you are about the result that you provide, the more other people are going to be stoked about the result that you provide. And that's also um, another, and, and I'm looking at this energetically though. I'm feeling it because that's the, to me, that's the excitement of service is 
I know that I can help this person create this thing. And I know how much this thing greatly improved my life. I can't wait to help this person improve their life in this area too. But when you get into trouble is when you don't know the result that you can provide, or you're able to create a result for yourself, but you don't know how to lead somebody else into that same result. Um, that's where things can get a little bit sticky. So you, you've got to know, <laughs> you've got to know what you did to create that result for yourself so that you can lead somebody else there. Cause that's another thing that I've seen come up too. Um, is that the person's really good at doing that for themselves, but they don't exactly know how or why. Uh, yeah. And so when the other person comes to them, they're kind of just, it's just really loose. It's really loose and it's really general and it's, there's no direction to the energy. Right. Cause to me, that's what a result is. It's like a pointed focus. It's laser focused energy. That's what it is. Right. Your energy is laser focused in a direction that creates something tangible. Right. So I, I guess I see results a little bit. I mean, I see it from an energetic standpoint. No, you see from an energetic standpoint, it's just, I mean, if someone wants to work with me and I feel and can tell that the way they're understanding it is I'm going to do the work for them, then I'm not going to work with you. If that's their logic yeah. behind what it means to work with somebody. On the other hand, what you're saying, well, that's why there's a difference between a therapist and a coach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cause that person, you would be able to sense right off the bat that they're in victim. Like right. you would, you would pick that up right away. And then it would just be, and this um, is why a lot of people have people apply to their programs too, which I actually stopped having people apply, but I always do one to two pre sessions with them so that I can really feel into their energy and where they're at and what they're ready for. And if they're willing, yeah, to go to that next uh, expansion. Right. Um, but yeah, that's precisely why, because right off the bat, you would be, hopefully, um, <laughs> you'd be able to sense that right. uh, and it would be a non-issue. And then too, so what they're taking me to now is kind of what you're speaking to yesterday around, um, well, I, maybe we were talking about this in private, but it was just about empowering, you know, the women that work for you, what kind of women work with you and don't even look at what you don't want. Don't even look at, you know, like, I don't want to work with people who have, who have victim mentality. I don't want to work with people who aren't willing to do the work. Just go into my clients show up. They're excited. It's fun. They value me. They value my programs. They value themselves enough to commit to their journey and just start empowering that. These are the kind of people who show up. And so then there's not even any other option. So what they're taking me to now is when you're doing your invocations, when you're creating things, which you can do constantly all day long. When I go for my walks, I'm like in speed mode, like I am right now, where I'm just like naming off and invoking what it is that I want to create. And you can just start defining the people that you want to work with, the dollar amount that you want to make, the result that you're going to get them, what you're super stoked about, what you're going to do with them, what you're going to do with your money, what, you know, and paint that picture and don't, there's no other option. That's the, the piece too, is that there's no other option. There's not like, you don't have to play the waiting game. Yes. Of course, like having an awareness that we are in a time space uh, experience. And so there's going to be some bandwidth between when you think about the thing and when it manifests, but you, the more you empower that and you focus on that, the more, crystallize it gets and that'll speed it up the more excited you are about it the more sped up it'll be so what you want to do is eliminate everything else as an option like you don't see anything else there is no other option these are the women that are showing up this is the dollar amount that I'm making or more or better mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and so it's just it gets all about increase so it's shifting completely out of lack mm -hmm. blocks unworthiness all of this we don't even man and I say this because I freaking love people and I understand because I've walked through all of this. I've stepped through all of this. I've taken this journey. I've had a lot of deep challenges in my life that God, I could do a whole two hour freaking episode on um, that. I've stepped through and walked through these things personally. We don't have to keep doing things the way that they have always been done. We do not have to keep empowering lack to create abundance, which is precisely what we're doing when we go into blocks and all of this stuff. We're saying, this is where on some level, this is where I'm not quite up to par. And this is where I need to fix myself so that I can be. Mm -hmm. We don't need to do that anymore. We need to shift completely into abundance mindset, into abundance mentality, into abundance energy. Um, and the way that we do that is we shift 
the direction of the energy. We shift our focus into activating new things. You can literally set down the old stuff. You don't have to worry about doing anything with it. Mm -hmm. You just shift. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And what I want to say to that too, and also because that's right, Christine was asking about invocations as well, um, is so, so that's on, that's on all levels. That's on the whole mental mindset level. That's on the emotional level. That's on the spiritual level. Like this is why people continue to feel disempowered when they constantly go to psychics or, or Akashic record reader or whatever. And I'm not knocking you if that's what you do, but it's, it's, if you're not already in creation motion energy, then going into your past life and clearing it, going into your soul contracts and clearing it, blah, 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 blah. It's not going to work with you because all you're doing when you do things like that is moving energy. We're clearing stagnant energy that's embedded inside of you, in your, in your body, in your etheric realm, whatever. We're just, we're shaking up the energy that's been stagnant or stuck or whatever for thousands of years. If, if you're already in this, if you're in, it's still in lack energy going into something like that, thinking it's going to fix you, or if you're doing mindset work, thinking it's going to fix you or, or whatever mm -hmm. it is, it's not going to. Now, if you start the path of creation motion, of creative expansion motion, if that's mm -hmm. what you're focused on, then if something like that does want to evolve and be expressed or released it'll automatically come up for you it'll automatically be shown and you're so forward motion that you'll just release it and you'll forget about it it's done mm -hmm. it's not this this oh, this thing it's, that's why we're getting out of healing modalities and we'll talk about that another time but the other thing i want <laughs> to say to invocations um at a real blatant level just honor and do what wants to come through you as far as an invocation is concerned. There's no right or wrong way to do it. I mean, sometimes for me, my invocation is just me in the shower asking for really ridiculous, stupid shit just to get <laughs> the vibration. And sometimes it's, I start mm -hmm. asking for what I really want. And then I start channeling some, something is some stream of consciousness just gets channeled through me or mm -hmm. I'm writing about it and I just start doing stream of consciousness. Or it's really though, to me, invocations are stream of consciousness and you can, mm -hmm. you, you really want to go into it with empowered energy. So sometimes you know, again, if it's, that's what wants to flow out of me, I'll say, I decree and I declare and I call upon, but it's all just natural. Like I'll say things sometimes or things will come out. I don't, I have no idea what it means. I have no idea what, what I'm calling forth, or I've never even said that before, but it's coming through because that's you deep down inside knowing how to free up your energy. That's the almost like they're putting it the future you coming back to bring you to that level. Like you don't have to think about it. It just, so Christine or anybody else who wants to do invocations, just do what feels empowered for you and start by asking for what you want and then moving beyond that and moving beyond that and moving beyond that to get you excited, to get you accelerated, to get you creative, to get you believing in any of that being possible for you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> that was funny. It was like in slow-mo for a minute. I don't know if you can see your, your video. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, I mean, that's all you're doing is asking for what you want. And, and that can look however you want it to look. It's, it's like Jen was saying, it's exactly what empowers you. And that's all. Sometimes for me, I'm just like, I'm so freaking excited that blank, 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 or thank you for blank, 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 or I want, I command blank, 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 mm -hmm. whatever. You are reality programming reality. You don't have to answer to anybody. You're just programming your reality. You're imprinting it with what you want. And so invocation, activation, focus, charging the energy, shifting energy in a new direction. It's all the same damn thing. Every time you focus on something, which this is perfect. I have on a Star Wars shirt because Star Wars is fucking amazing. And <laughs> one of the most brilliant lines in that whole movie is your focus 
I think they say your focus determines your reality. But for me, it's, yeah, it does. Your focus creates your reality. Your focus activates energy. So just imagine it like every time you put your focus on something, you're activating it and empowering it and empowering it. So what do you want to empower? What do you want? Focus on increase, focus on abundance, focus on more, focus on money, focus on yes. And that's what they're saying too, is like whatever helps you to get into the energy of like, yes, 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 where you're just a yes <laughs> to yeah. fucking life and magic and beauty and all of that. Do what you need to do to get yourself into a yes space. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And tune, tune out whatever is not that. Stay aware of your, you know, whole picture, but don't focus on all the BS that you don't need to be involved in. Just focus on what it is that you are willing to create. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I feel like we could go on and on about this for hours and I'm sure we'll, we'll probably I God, I love it. <laughs> come on maybe even tomorrow or whatever and continue on the same thing. We'll, we'll see, but, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, take, take that and run with that you guys and just be any of that that speaks to you is what you're meant to be doing to help you expand your energy. Mm -hmm. take some leave some but it's whatever really really sounded inspiring or really like clicked for you on this in this call that's what you need to go and and be doing mm -hmm. yeah so oh. well i have to get going i've got a call <laughs> right after this uh -huh. Um, so thank you all for watching and tuning in as always ask us your questions ahead of time so we can answer tomorrow or the next day or the next mm -hmm. um, if this really resonated with you make sure you share this with your friends and your community because we're all all being pulled and called forward to step into our, our sovereignty and this is valuable information for everybody your entrepreneur or not so definitely mm -hmm. share this out um, and as always, we'd like to invite you to join our inner circle starting November 1st. Um, it's really honestly, I think one of the most exciting things about it is that you get the both of us together. Uh -huh. <laughs> the two for one special, right? So, uh -huh. you know, you're going to get all of it. You're going to get the galactic energies, the magical energies, the strong grounded empowerment, no bullshit energy that both of us really carry. And we'll be doing the fun mystical magical uh activations and things like that but at the end of the day it is about grounding in that next wave of expansion grounding in those results for you grounding in that massive up level in your income and in your business and your reality or starting starting the second business or whatever it is we're here to make that possible make that shift possible for you in alignment with ease with flow with excitement and with so much more added to that than you're even already asking for. So we'll put the links in. Definitely check that out. Join as soon as you can because we do have only a select number of spaces available. We want this to be very, um, very, I want to say succinct. That's not the right word. But just just very sacred and loving and supportive um, in that space. So yeah. Perfect. <laughs> like, where, where the fuck do I sign up for that? <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, I guess, I guess I'll let you in, Solara. <laughs> oh, thank you. But we should, um, I, cause I feel that there's going to be a ton of questions around everything that we talked about. So we can probably continue part two with questions. So I just want to add, if you do have questions coming through, I'm sure neither one of us have any issue talking more about money. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, leave us your questions. Um, we love you guys. I love you, Jen. Thank you, Thank you. Uh, for bringing your magic as always. You too, my love. Uh-huh. All right, cool. We'll have a good session. I will chat with you tomorrow. All right. All right. Bye. Bye.